Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games. We're talking about Call to Adventure. What is Call to Adventure? Well, it's a hero crafting game. It's from Brother Wise Games. But imagine the old days, <laughs> especially for me. We're going back to the mid-80s, where I seem to craft more characters than actually play the role-playing game. It's like we couldn't quite get past the crafting. So this focuses on you crafting a character that's going to move through a three arc story done with beautiful cards and you're going to take your character you craft basically from Padawan to Jedi Master or something in between or Padawan to Sith Lord maybe because you can play an evilish character or someone who's very very good or someone in between. And I see all kinds of potentials for expansions or even kind of like mods. I could see this taken out of the fantasy world and dropped right into, well, from the war game side, like World War II. So my character's a drafted soldier, or he's an airborne recruit. Um, and then the middle level is, you know, he's, he's strong, or he's uh, scared, or likes to work with a group and then his final destiny could be saves his platoon gets home to his wife or it could be anything so enough of that let me go show you what i'm talking about it really blings well on the table and i gotta mention throwing the runes it's just a cool little thing let me go show you what throwing the runes means Real quick, the lay of the land. You have your character board. I'll get into these character cards in a bit. You have story cards like Epic 1, 2, 3, or however you want to do it. Chapters 1, 2, and 3. You got this beautiful removable case for your runes, which you will roll like dice. You've got some experience tokens. These are the generic runes that I'll come back to in a moment. Uh, you've got your, uh, on your tracker, whether or not you're going to be very, very good and get bonus good points or very, very evil, in which case you will pick up evil points and maybe not even be able to do some things because you're so evil. Beautiful descriptions on how the runes work. Again, we'll come back to that. Uh, you've got your hero uh, and anti-hero cards. That's not their name, but off the top of my head, I can't remember. Um, I'll show you those uh, briefly. And you've got a very nice box that has an inset that allows you to put the runes in there and to store stuff very nicely. Uh, well thought out, even little score pads to help you add up at the end. And I'll show you that briefly at the end just to show all the different ways you can score. But even the layout here looks nice. When you begin, you're going to have uh, two of each of these cards. It's like your origin story... Uh, I forget what the middle is, and then your ending destiny, and this is actually secret. Nobody else at the table knows what it is, because it's basically your end goals. Let me come back and focus down on this. I'll show you some of these cards, then I'll show you how these work, and then we'll go back to final thoughts. So I'll show you the cards. You'll get two of each of these, these backs, and... Um, they'll match up down here. So I could have been a sailor or a hunter. I chose sailor. I could have had a, a little talent of born lucky or uh, thirst for knowledge. Or my final victory conditions could be the mighty champion or I could have had the master of whisperers. And you're already seeing how your, your character begins with some depth. So, first thing is, no other players are going to see kind of what my end-win conditions are. So this mighty conquerors who I want to become from being a humble yet lucky sailor, and you can see that at the end of the game, I'm going to get two bonus, these uh, like enlightenment, I can't remember, these good tokens or these good uh, points for each of the strength um, runes or strength icons that I picked up throughout the game, and I'm going to get one point for each one of the um, constitution and the dexterity. Now knowing that, again, this would be secret, nobody else would know that, you can see why I definitely went for <clears throat> the sailor over the hunter. 
So these symbols in the top right corner are the symbols that I'm going to need to collect down here. So already I have a strength token and I have an intelligence, I call it a token, but it's like an attribute, a strength attribute and, and an intelligence. Whereas down here I would have picked up dexterity and wisdom. But I didn't go with the hunter. You can also see I picked up once per turn when you fail a strength or intelligence challenge, which is perfect. I'll be having a little bit of a bonus with my runes I'll be casting. Then I can pick up, um, uh, or sorry, you may uh, pay two experience to try again, so I could do a do-over. And I'm going to quickly show you, so born lucky, I didn't pick up any more of these attributes. But it's always down here in the text. Once per turn, I may spin. So again, I'm spending experience tokens to flip over one dark rune I just cast. I'll cover dark runes in a bit. You've already seen the victory conditions. So right off the bat, you're creating kind of where your character is headed. Your experience tokens, you start the game with some. These are just plastic little diamonds that stack nicely on themselves. Let me show you the runes real quickly and then we're going to come up and I'll just show you how um, I'll just work on this um, row here we won't go into all these other cards but as someone achieves three of these which they stack underneath in a version like this all right if they achieve it they stack it and they pick up the ability that is on that card so my character would now have two intelligence I would have one of these little story, um, oh, that's a scroll. I forget what each one of those are, but those are like a set collecting bonus at the end. So now I would be casting two runes if that was the case, but let me show you the runes. You can see they're in this nice case. You can see I've got some dark runes here. I'll explain that in a second. And then runes that match the different talents that will be on your card, if I can get this one to show. So, when I go for a challenge, I'm using the cards I've already had and any cards that are tucked under them. I can count up these little things if I were to have it, and it'll allow me to cast runes on top of the standard little uh, three that everybody gets. So, what is a challenge? Challenge is, in this case, the magical test. So, whatever's on this uh border here and it tells me to go for it I need charisma and intelligence and I'm gonna to have to get these are added or chained together and I'm gonna to have to get at least four Now I do have an option I can either go for the arcane ability in which case if I pass this magical test I'll pick it up and I pick up this little story um, item and I'll gain an additional intelligence it's added to my character this will be tucked underneath my card or I could go for the sorceress talent which case I'm going to gain a dark uh, card, again I forget the name of it, and I'll grab some charisma. Let's say that I'm going to go for the arcane ability. I want to add even more intelligence. I already have one on my card over here, but I want more. So, sometimes these will say that something's harder and you have to add one to the total. In this case it doesn't. I just need to get four. Well, I start off with my regular standard three runes. I am going for, I need either charisma or intelligence. My sailor has a strength, which won't be helpful here at all. It's not required. It's not something I need for this, but my intelligence will allow me to reach into the rune here and pull out one of the intelligence. Now, I'll show it quickly. There's a special one that shows this like magic wand, but it's got these three little pips around it. If I had collected three different intelligence icons on my cards, I would be able to cast all three runes. And once, so if I had two, I would have this with a slash on one side and the wand on the other. But once you pick up the third one, you get some little nice little bonuses. So a slash counts one, the wand counts two, but this one tells you, and you only get it when you have the third one, there's a little extra bonus, which is actually described down on my chart down here. And in this case, it would allow me to actually, if I, if I threw these runes and I got this, I would get to grab an extra hero card. But I'm ahead of myself. I only have one intelligence, so I can add that 
to this challenge. My max that I could get here would be one, two, three, and then four, five. Well, I need to get at least a four, and the odds are pretty good. I could end up with something like so, where I'm only getting two. But you always, or almost always, depending on where you're at, I've knocked my piece around, have the chance, unless you're way down at the bottom, where you can spend an experience token and dive possibly into the dark side. You can do something a little underhanded. And these black runes are dark runes that you can add in. It's as if you're, you're dabbling in something slightly evil or tricky. Now, if I get a slash, it'll count as one. If I get the moon, it counts as two, very similar to my wand in this case. However, that means I've done something or, or I've damaged my, let's say, soul in a way. And it's going to move me down this track, which can get bad. I can get points for it, but it can start to get bad and I can't play good positive hero cards and some things that could happen. However, that's going to give me a much better chance to achieve four. So here we go. I've done it. I've paid my experience. I'm going to just roll these like dice. So I toss my runes. One sticks to my hand. All right, and we will total them up. So you can see I've got two, four, five. I would get to go pick either a, uh, a hero card on the dark side or the light side. I would get to do that. This one counts as nothing. I have achieved four. I went over one. I will then get to add this card. So because I went for the arcane ability, had I gone for the sorceress talent, it would have done like this. Done like this? Would have gone like this. Let me switch over to my board. And I would tuck it underneath, either above or below, my sailor card from this row here, and that would get refilled. Now, the second someone, let's say I'm playing with three other players. The second one of the players gets three cards underneath their, uh, you know, their level one uh, hero card, they will then flip these over and they become available. Not only to the player that has three, but to all players. Now they're much harder to get. Their challenges are much more difficult, but it also allows me as a player to maybe take some level two story cards and to get them and tuck them underneath and you can gain a lot of abilities. It's like a catch up. It's a dangerous way, but you can catch up in the game or maybe I just stay down here on these level ones and pick them up. Now, instead of challenges, real quickly, I'll show you. You can also go for things that are just talents. Um, they, uh, they don't have a challenge on the side here. I just have to meet the requirements, so you may only gain this if you have a uh, dexterity or spend an experience point. I said dexterity, I meant constitution. <laughs> For some reason, that does not mean constitution to me. I do not know why. But if I spent the point, or if I already had this constitution, I could add adventurous as well, and it simply would stack underneath my card. So you can see my sailor already now has two intelligence, one strength, and one constitution, along with two of the little story uh, icons which I want to collect. And that is how the game progresses. You can never have more than uh, three cards tucked underneath, so I would have my basic sailor card, and then I could have three other cards tucked above or below. And then I would do three here. The whole time I'm working towards the victory conditions that are set out under Mighty Conqueror, which no one else knows. So you can see, I want to be able to get a lot of strength, a lot of uh, constitution, and dexterity. All right, that is the game in a nutshell. Now, I've been playing this for a couple weeks now. I got a Kickstarter. Uh, it was not a review copy. I paid for this. I personally love the art. I think it's very evocative, um, it's gorgeous, and the main thing I get out of this game, although I'll tell you a little bit more of this in the closing, is the building of the character and the story. Um, I'm not super competitive when I play this. It's, uh, I will add one thing, I like when people's boards tell a very nice story. Um, 
I've been playing some role-playing games lately, and I kind of dig the whole aspect of this is a simple, quick 15-20 minute game. I've played it solo as well. That was fun. I actually got too hooked into my story and I made it real hard for me to beat the uh, the villain at the end. But it's played well on all counts. Um, I've seen a couple hits where they're saying it's, it's sometimes easy to meet your challenges. Yeah, sometimes it is. Uh, wait till you catch yourself behind though or you miss one. And now you're playing catch up and then you're trying to grab something that maybe is on the next tier even though you haven't fully filled this and you miss again. And uh, again, building the story is what I enjoy, but let's come out for my final thoughts. All right. You've seen the gorgeous cards, those larger uh, tarot cards that are coming out, the, the beautiful art that's on them, the way you're telling this kind of three-act story. But I would let's say three-act story rather than like hero's journey the entire journey is very tight and succinct you know from the young pupil to the evil or good master at the end or head of the throne or whatever story you end up telling um the tossing of the runes is perfect for the theme i love it and it's a very interesting way to step away from dice or cards getting you the thing or whatever. I love the idea that you're adding in these runes. It's just so tactile, of course. And, you know, throw them down. You always got the base three, but boy, they're not going to bring you through much. Do you dabble in something that's maybe a little evil, a little dark, uh, especially early on? Yeah. Yeah, you do, generally. You're picking up these experience points, which you can spend. You've got the cards triggering in. The whole time you're trying to make all these little points that you can make from different areas and doing different things and picking up your skills. You can layer in the adversary and play it solo and just try to... I actually enjoyed playing it solo, though, if I was even playing two or three characters. Um, my favorite thing of this is building the stories for an individual character and thinking that is perfect and it's so tight and compact again that it's over in like 20 minutes and and it feels like you've gone on this quest very nicely done beautiful production one of the best kickstarters i've backed in several years and I can't wait for the expansions that are already coming <laughs> and that is <clears throat> and this is not a bad thing but if you're a completionist and you enjoy this there's gonna be a lot coming I guarantee it this the the game just in this realm fantasy alone has miles it can go all kinds of ways and then you can pop this out and do a space theme, same thing, but in space. You could pop this out, as I hinted to, and same thing, but World War II. And maybe this one's drafted in, and then what happens, and then he becomes a hero. This one is an airborne trooper, and whatever, works well on a team. You know, I, I, it could go all over the place, even outside of the fantasy theme. I don't know how you'd throw runes. Maybe they're called, like, uh, Fate. I don't know. So that would be the only thing. That the, the runes, tossing the runes fits perfect into the theme. But trust me, it could be done. I could see it happening. Big hit. Big fan. Call to Adventure. And it is a call to adventure. Chief, Bonnie with Board Game. See you later.